<laughs> Cal Visuals here, and today we're talking about a favorite topic of mine, color correcting and color grading. How do you get that sexy cinematic footage? I'm gonna share with y'all six, that feels better, six of my favorite tools to use in Adobe Premiere Pro. Let's do it. y'all so went ahead and started up a premiere pro project right here and as you can see here we've got casey conroy love this girl amazing artist go check her out anyways some nice simple easy uh porcelain skin tones outdoors and then we've got here in the middle we have got some um light skin skin tone indoors dark setting and then bright studio setting here with a darker complexion, um, black skin tones. And so we've got a nice tonal range here to give you guys. And I'm just gonna show you a bit of you know, how I go through and do my editing process. So let's jump in. So first and foremost, guys, I'm gonna go to the curves and I'm just gonna create a general curve to begin with. This is going to get me just a rough, rough estimate of the general look I'm going for. So I'll hop into here, into the curves. I don't mess too much with the color ones, um, just because, again, that's kind of what I consider the LUT for, is really giving it that final look and grade. This is more just about corrections um, this is the phase of color correction so right now I'm just really that looks pretty solid to me um, just trying to get the right skin tones here I'm actually gonna go to a, a frame where it's a bit sharper there we go it's good right there so as you can see here we're looking like super dull I'm gonna warm this up and keep in mind here guys I am editing for correction and grading but I'm also kind of showing you just my creative process um, so I am giving this a certain look. I'm not going for just like a clean, commercial, perfect skin tones and everything. I'm trying to give it a stylized look as well as, you know, just showing you guys again my process. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna warm it up a bit here, give it a nice summer feeling. Uh, looking a tad bit green, so we're gonna boost that up just a tiny bit. That looks good right there. Drop the shadows to get a little more contrast boost the highlights and whites. I want this to be like very inviting. So the highlights and whites. All right, and so next we're gonna jump over here to HSL Secondary. This is what I love to use for correcting skin tones. So we'll jump to that right there. We're gonna shade in here because we want as much of the skin tone information as possible. We don't do too much though that we're starting to affect all the environment. So this is pretty solid right here. Click off that so I can see the full scale of things. Denoise a bit, have a bit of blur. I'm gonna come over here and it's time to start making some corrections. But first, we're gonna open up my other favorite platform to use with this. They coincide perfect together is scopes. And so what you're really, this is kind of showing you, you know, obviously right here, you can see the cutoff at 100. So I over peaked. I had some things that were a bit overexposed. Most likely all this stuff right here, skin tones and everything looks solid. Um, and then here, you know, I'm not hitting zero. So I did a great job of making sure that nothing was underexposed. I have all the data information. I'm not losing anything in the blacks. I have all of it, I can see it all. Um, so that's helpful to see all that information right there. But this right here, um, uh, this scope is my main focus. This is what I'm gonna really be looking at, again, for correcting skin tones. So I have a uh, second and different uh, tutorial video, uh, which I can link here at the end. This is a more in-depth, and it's all focused around color correcting skin tones. Um, so it's really looking in-depth and specific at the uh, scopes. Uh, vector scope specifically as well as using HLS uh, secondary in Premiere Pro so I'd highly recommend checking that out if you're looking to learn learn a bit more about uh, color correcting uh, skin tone specifically so we'll continue here 
Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of work to the mid-tones. Warm it up again just a little bit. Shadows, I'm gonna cool down just a tad. Cool, that looks good right there. Tiny bit of sharpness. And I'm actually gonna pull the saturation back a bit. Oh, it's pretty good right there. I'm actually not liking the shadows. I think I got a little bit too much magenta hue in there. Next, I'm gonna jump over here. Excuse me, not markers. I wanna jump into effects. I'm gonna jump into the effects and get out three-way color correct. I love using this tool. Um, I think it's great for doing overarching changes to the whole piece. Um, you know, so again, we're touching all the midtones here, not just on. What's great about HLS Secondary is it essentially allows you to mask out and choose what you're specifically editing. And whereas this, you know, is just overall the whole image, it's editing the midtones. Um, but again, this is a nice piece to kind of do right before you add your grade, um, just to finalize like a basic overall kind of color scheme and correction for it. There's actually one element I'm gonna jump back to and show you guys because I messed up and I didn't do it. All right, so just trying to clean the shadows up a bit right there. That looks good. All right, so we're almost done. Oh, <laughs> never mind. I'm an idiot. I did. Um, so I was going to touch on just the temperature and tint. Um, so those are just great kind of... Uh, tools to use as well. I thought I didn't use that, but apparently I did. Uh, so, yay. We're gonna jump over here into creative and we're gonna add a LUT. Woo, way too powerful. <laughs> so you never wanna use the full intensity of a LUT. Obviously, again, LUT's real purpose as a lookup table. Ooh, I used the acronym and stuff. Oh, it felt good. The real purpose of a LUT is to give it that final grade, that final look. So you always want to be keeping that in mind. You know, you're not supposed to be using the LUT as your original kind of, you shouldn't be grading before you color correct. Uh, it's just going to make the process super long, tedious, annoying. You're going to go through and be making a lot of changes and corrections, trying to get every, um, all the different images to match and, and feel cohesive. Uh, so get them cohesive, get the color corrected, get the white balance proper first then give it the specific look you want it to have. And so obviously I'm gonna drop down the intensity on this. I like something like that. Um, excuse me, I'm gonna jump back in creative though, and I'm gonna kill just a tiny bit of that saturation. And add a little bit of that faded film. And there you go. It's a nice pleasing image I like. I like it right there. It's good. It's good stuff. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in to this next piece here. This is from a music video project I did with the artist Diraj. It's entitled Dance. Again, you can check this out on my YouTube channel or my website. Um, but let's go ahead and jump in. Again, we're gonna start with the curves. So, good little point right there. Let's jump into here and get the shadows down a bit. Highlights, maybe drop those down just a tad. Well, the whites just a tad. All right, so we're looking super green. We can cool it down a bit as well. 
right about there. It looks pretty good. It's pretty solid. So now we're gonna jump in and we're gonna correct the skin tones. All right, that's good there. We don't wanna push it too much. Refine and denoise a little bit. Add a bit of blur. All right. Let's go ahead and correct these midtones and open the scopes. There we go. I thought I was gonna have to close this out and start all over for you guys, which, woo, probably wouldn't happen. All right, so let's dive in. We got the scopes. As you can see here, we're actually pretty solid on the chart. Um, again, nothing is overexposed, nothing is underexposed. We did a great job of getting all the information here in the image. We're not losing anything, which is fantastic. Um, you're looking at here and we're pretty flat along this line, again, which is fantastic. It means we're pretty solid and set with um, quality, good and even skin tones. But again, I'm gonna make some slight changes and alterations here. I'm gonna clean it up just a little bit. It's a little on the green side for me. Shadows, we're gonna fix up a bit. That looks pretty good right there. And then I think we'll just drop the saturation down so it's not like so orangish. Now let's look at that here. See how much uh, that changes right there? Again, it's subtle, but it makes a big difference um, and so we're getting a much cleaner skin tone look here again but it, again it's still a little orangish reddish so I'm gonna bring skin tones there a bit and again I'm gonna bring the saturation down just a little bit more all right so that's that stuff so now I'm gonna jump over controls add the three-way let's jump onto the midtones here again guys I am going for somewhat of a stylized look here so I want the skin tones to be clean but I do want it to have like a very desaturated and green edgy like just unsettling feeling because in this moment he's just been kidnapped and so that's what we're really going for is <laughs> he's not happy he's very unsettled <laughs> yeah so we're uh, kind of going for that look right now I think I'm pretty happy and satisfied and just know what I would highly suggest especially when you're doing like a bigger or longer form project is adding it as a adjustment layer for the LUT. So that way the LUT is being applied to all images within the project. So we'll go into LUT here. I'm gonna go in here. Let's find something we like. Ooh, that looks good. So 830, that looks pretty solid right there. some of that intensity go back here make final kind of adjustments if I need to shadows there I'm gonna kill some blacks and then it just looks too saturated so I'm gonna kill out some saturation and drop down the intensity just a bit and then finally white balance and everything felt pretty solid for me, but again, we're going for a stylized look here. So I'm gonna make it feel a bit more cold, dark, and uncomfortable. Let's check it out. All right. And so again, we can kind of just jump in here and we can look at, take that off, 
color and three way off. See the flat image. Those are our corrections. And then finally our LUT. And that's our image guys. I love it. All right, so final one here. Let's find a good point we can make the edit off of. That looks perfect right there. Again, we're gonna jump in, curves. Ooh, that does not look good though. Look how yellow that is. This is gonna be a good one for you guys. Because we're going for a clean studio look. So um, yeah, it should be clean skin tones here. And this is not a clean uh, set of clean skin tones right here. This is ugly, not, not the talent. Talent is beautiful, um, but we are way off here with skin tones. So we're gonna get the white balance first. We're gonna do a little bit of a tint here with her skin tones, not too much though. Shadows, that looks good right about there. Feels super bright in the studio. Nice, cool, so that looks pretty solid right there. Next, we're gonna jump in here. Again, we gotta really edit out and fix up these skin tones. Cool, that's perfect right there. Denoise a bit, blur it a bit. And let's correct this stuff. Scopes going again. Um, so again, yeah, we kind of got mid-tones pretty solid. I'm gonna take it up a little bit more. Something like that right there. Shadows. Again, we still need to be a bit more on the magenta blue side. As again, as you can see, we're moving here, how it's affecting the scope on the other side. That's pretty solid and even there. And then again, highlights, we're just gonna match those better to true white. That's pretty good right there. I don't care for any contrast added. Desaturate it a little bit. And let's look at that difference really quick. Wow. Can we just say that real quick? All together, ready? One two, three, wow. It's a huge difference, guys. Um, just much, much better overall look. Okay, enough, enough. Let's jump over here, effects, three-way. That's a quick trick. If you double click on it, you don't have to click and drag it over. You know, you can click and drag it over here or click and drag it up here, or you can just double click. Recently found that out, love it. All right, so now we're over here, again, playing around with this, trying to get our actual look. Clean dark shadows. Clean highlights. And now we're messing with the mid-tones. Feels pretty good there. And now we're gonna jump in here for basic correction. Say zero. I like this one right here, six, seven, eight, zero. And it's way too intense. Again, obviously, got on full glass. So we'll go for right about there. happy with that honestly I think three-way mid-tones are a bit 
too much, so we'll kind of draw that back. And we're gonna go a little more orange too. I think it's a little too magenta. And I don't want to be nitpicking here the whole time, <laughs> um, but yeah, that gives you a solid final image. Now again, I would probably clean up blemishes a little bit, denoise this a bit, um, but overall, pretty pretty much that's the, that's the final color correction and grade for that right there. And again, I'll kind of just scrubbing through the three of them right here. You know, getting a really good stylized cinematic look. Um, and yeah, guys, those are my six favorite tools to utilize for color correcting and color grading in Premiere Pro. Premiere? Premiere. That just sounds Premiere. 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 Premiere Pro. It sounds good. It sounds very good. All right, y'all, that's it for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed, picked up some great pointers on how to better color correct, color grade, speed ramp that process, and get that sexy cinematic buttery footage out. Hope you enjoyed. Be sure to like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see y'all next week.